Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Olga and Chang'e of the Rust Viet Union faction from Scythe. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas, so welcome to episode 4 in this Scythe miniature painting series. Now at the time of this being released, there is no episode 3 at the moment, and that's because I'm just leaving that spot open for the airship video for the Saxon Empire, because I haven't painted them yet, and I want to put um, the three videos for each faction together, so character, mech, and airship. So episodes 4, 5, and 6 will be for the Rust Viet Union, which is this faction here. So starting off or early in the series with the character for the Rust Viet Union because my wife and I are going to be play playing the Rise of Fenris campaign. Um, I'm playing as the Saxon Empire so those videos are coming up as well and she's going to be painting as, playing as the Rust Viet Union so these two factions are being done first. So, so far I've just done a Zenithal Prime, so I just hit the Mini with black all over, then grey from a fairly high angle and then white from directly above, took a couple of pictures and then I'll just be using that as a guide for um, highlighting, highlighting and shading um, further down the track. And um, now just into base coating. So, um, in terms of the colour scheme, just stuck to um, the artwork, um, but I couldn't in any of the artworks see what her uh, what the colour of her cape is. So I chose red for that because the main colour of the Rust Viet Union is red so I thought that was just another way to help uh, that colour come through to make it obvious that uh, like which faction she's from. But um, I didn't sort of worry about doing anything too interesting with Olga because um, one of the ways in which my painting has changed quite a bit um, since when I started is that I try and have a focal point for the mini, um, so, uh, some part of the mini that draws someone's attention straight away. And for this, it's going to be Chang'e the tiger. So um, I put sort of quite a bit of work into Chang'e um, with, the, with the different colors um, and getting the stripe sort of looking right so that when someone looks at it, looks at it their eyes go straight to Chang'e rather than Olga. So I don't really worry about doing sort of anything too interesting with Olga um, because I don't want her to take the attention away from the tiger.
Um, so here I'm painting her hair. Now, not so much her ponytail, but the hair that's kind of coming down the side of her face. I followed, it looked like in the sculpt that um, there was actually a raised part there where her hair was falling down. So I sort of followed that. Um, and then later on when I paint her eyes, it just looked really odd. Um, couldn't sort of quite describe it. I, I, I showed it to my wife at the time and she sort of made the, made the same comment. Um, and yeah, there was just something about the face that, that just wasn't quite right. So I ended up going back and then um, painting the skin back over part of the, the side of the hair that's um, coming down the side of her face. And it does make it look better. But um, yeah, it was the one part, um, even sort of right at the end when I was finished, that I still wasn't really happy with and I didn't know how to fix it. Because um, yeah, I think, I don't know whether just the shape of the face in the sculpt was just not quite right. Um, but yeah, just looked a, looked a little bit odd. So I'd love to know if you've painted her as well, um, if you thought the face just looked a little bit funny um, or if maybe it was actually the way that I painted it. But yeah, it was the one spot that I wasn't really happy with. Um, and yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't quite work out why. All right, so now I'm into painting Changa here. Um, now, before I started painting this mini, I had a bit of a look online at some different pictures of people that had, that had painted Olga and Changa. And one thing that I sort of noticed in the way that some people had um, painted Changa that I wanted to avoid was that the orange was just too orange. Um, just way, way, way too bright. And if you look at pictures of real tigers, yes, there is some orange in the fur, but it's actually more brown than orange, really. Um, so the underside, you can see I painted, it's brown with a little bit of the bone color mixed in, so it's a much, much lighter brown. Um, and then for the top part, it's the same brown as the underside, but just with a little bit of orange mixed in just to give it that bit of a tinge. Um, and then even um, I, I re-go over this with the same brown but with less orange mixed in for the second coat because I thought this still looked too orange. And I think even though it, 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 it is still definitely brown, um, I think that was the right move to make because then towards the end, I then do a seraphim sepia wash over the whole thing just to bring out the texture in the fur and that ends up leaving it with a really, really good colour, I think. So yeah, that was that was just what I was really trying to avoid was just making it too orange. So having it definitely brown, but just with that orange tinge to it. And um, yeah, I was happy with, with how it came up. Also, another thing that I tried to do while painting, as you can see, I'm blending the two different tones there together, just wet blending them as I'm as I'm working away. But I didn't want the blend to be perfect because, again, if you look at um, photos of real tigers, yes, there is a bit of a blend there as um, one colour of the fur meets another, but there is still a bit of a line there because it is like separate fur. So I did do a blend so that there is a, a bit of a transition and it's not just this really, really defined line, but I tried to not blend it perfectly um, so that it does kind of give the impression that you do have sort of one layer of fur meeting another and that the fur is different colors. And I achieved that by having some inconsistency in where the blends actually take place. So there isn't a really sort of solid consistent line um, where that blend happens in some spots a little bit higher than some others. Um, so it just kind of gives it a slightly little bit of a jagged edge. Um, in some spots I don't blend it as much or in some spots I blend it more. So it'll be smoother in some spots and less smooth in others. And it just gives just enough inconsistency where those two colors meet to make it look like they do actually blend from one to another, but it's not a smooth transition. And yeah, I'm, I'm sort of happy with how that worked in the end. Um, and it sort of replicated that look of, yeah, it's not a really, really smooth blend across the whole thing. There is some inconsistency there. All right, so here I'm putting down a wash on the cape just to um, have it flow into the recesses to take care of the shading. 
and I really, really wish I didn't do this. Um, for two main reasons. One is that for whatever reason, the tone of the actual wash just didn't end up matching the red that I used for the cape. Um, so yes, it's a darker red, but it was just the wrong darker red. Um, and so when I go back to do the highlighting and I go back to using the clotted red, I think it is for the actual cape, they just don't match well together. It just doesn't look right. Um, but also, um, and I've spoken about this in some of my recent videos, how I think washes just seem to get overused. They're just too much of a go-to thing when, oh, I finished painting, better put a wash over everything. I used to be a culprit for that. But what I've tried to do now is look more at, okay, what am I actually going to be, like how am I going to be highlighting and shading this particular thing? And will a wash actually be the right way to go about that? So washes are great for when you've got um, recesses that are really, really close to each other. So like hair or chain mail or something like that, it plays nicely into the recesses. But when you've got something like a cloak or a cape, like Olga does, where you've got gradual folds, I don't think it's good for that. And the reason for that is that um, because those folds are gradual, the wash just dries right in the bottom of the recess and you don't end up with a gradual transition from where the darker shadow is up to where the brightest highlight is going to be. And that was what was difficult here for me with the highlighting, is first of all, I had the wrong tone for the shade, but also because I had a really, really defined line between where the wash was sitting, where it had dried and where it wasn't, I just, in, in such a short distance from the top of the fold to the bottom of the fold, I just couldn't get a smooth blend. It was just way, way too hard to get a transition in such a small distance. So what I end up doing and what I should have done in the first place, which is what I've been doing recently in this sort of a case, is just mixing up a darker red, taking the clotted red and just mixing up a darker one or using bloodstained red, which is the other, the, the darker red that I do have thinning it right down and then just layering it up. So just putting that into where the shadows of the cape will be and then just adding more and more layers until I've gotten the depth of the color that I want and gotten that gradual blend that I want and just gradually working the paint into the bottom of the recess. So yeah, I've, I, I've spoken about this. I went back on my word and I, I did it myself. I used a washer I shouldn't have. Um, but yeah, layering would have been the better approach here um, just because of those smooth folds, um, because the wash, yeah, it gave that really defined line and it was just too hard in such a short distance to get a smooth transition.
Right here, I'm just trying to create a bit of a fur effect on her hat thing. Um, and I'm just doing that by just gradually mixing up a lighter and lighter tone for the, from the base coat that I used for her hat. And then just doing little straight lines, really fine straight lines, just to give the impression of, of fur. I think it does the job, um, especially when the mini's in the middle of the table. But if you look up close and actually inspect it, it looks a, a bit rough. Um, if you know of a good technique for creating a fur effect when you don't actually have the texture to paint on, I would love to know that because, yeah, I think it, like I said, it does the job, but it is a little bit rough and if you inspect it, it, it doesn't look quite right. And here is where I've gone back with the cape and I'm just, yeah, with, with it really, really thinned down. This is a darker, darker red, thinned it right down. Now I'm just um, layering it up in the recesses. Um, and I'm also just going back with the, um, what, Carnage Red, which I think is what I'm using to, to highlight back up to the base coat. Just blending it in also to the, um, the shades that I'm putting in, just to get a smoother transition. And it ends up looking a lot, lot better. It's still not perfect. I did have a bit of trouble highlighting and shading the cape because those folds are so slight and also so close together. Um, yeah, I did have a bit of trouble getting the, um, getting the smooth transitions, but it, it did end up looking better. All right, so now we're into the stripes on Changa, and I'll admit, I was pretty nervous going into this part because this is, as I was talking earlier about having that focal point for the mini, these stripes are really the focal point for this whole mini. Um, this is what I want people to be looking at when they first see it. This is what I want their attention to be drawn to. And if it didn't look right, yeah, it was it, it was it was not going to be good. And also because if I had to repaint over them, I was going to have to recreate the tones that I created for the um, for the rest of the fur. So what I did with this is I found a picture of a tiger on my phone, one that showed as much of the tiger as I could get. Um, and then I've just got this sitting off to the side and I just keep checking back in with this to see where the stripes are on that tiger. And I basically just match them onto this. Um, the other thing that I do is I'm not painting just smooth straight lines. I'm making that each stripe is lots of little individual lines. Um, so that it does create the impression of fur because if you do look at the stripes on a tiger yeah it's not just a straight line some some of the fur is a little bit longer than other bits of fur so you don't get a real smooth edge it does have that slightly uh, um, jaggedy or furry look for lack of a better term So if you're going to be doing something on a mini similar to this, like stripes on a tiger or spots on a cheetah or something like that, where you're trying to replicate something that occurs naturally, I definitely, definitely recommend getting a picture of that thing and just copying it. Because I'm really, really happy in the end with the way that these stripes look. 
And I think the main reason for that is because it actually looks right. Um, because what I noticed as I was um, looking at pictures is that, um, you know, you, some of the stripes, they start up on the back or carry on to the other side. Some of them start halfway down, some of them are long, some of them are short, some of them split into other lines. They did things that I didn't actually realize that they did because I had never looked that closely at, at tiger stripes before. And uh, if you're going to yeah, try and recreate something or you know that, that does occur naturally or you're trying to get a particular effect, like even if you're doing like rust or something like that, find a picture of it, look at what makes it look right and then try and replicate that because that's a big thing that I think will kill the look is if you just kind of go off memory or just what you think it might look like or just a bit of a generic kind of look for that particular thing, it's going to stand out and it's it, there's going to be something about it that just won't work. And I think that'd be really, really easy to do um, with the stripes on the tiger. Like if you just did say straight edges and just kind of did consistent lines coming straight off the back, evenly spaced or something like that. Again, it wouldn't look right because that's not actually how tiger stripes are. Um, and yeah, it wasn't until I really looked closely at some pictures that I was, could, could really see what they were doing. Because yeah, in my head, um, they were much more uniform than what they actually are. Um, and yeah, so I think a big part of why this works, or at least why, why I was happy with it, is because it looks right took it off the picture um, and yeah um, so that's that's definitely a thing that I would recommend if you're going to try and recreate something that has a very particular look um, as opposed to just like just just painting like a cloak red or something like that um, yeah get a picture um, look to see what makes it work um, and then just recreate that
All right, so just getting into the basing a little bit more here. Um, and if you look at the different spots on the board where each of the different factions start, there is a bit of variation in like the terrain where they start. Some There's a little bit of snow in some spots and others have more vegetation, stuff like that. Where the Rust Viet Union starts, it's a little bit sort of in between. Um, it's a bit grassy, but not sort of too over the top. And so, yeah, I just try to create a little bit of differentiation in the bases from one faction to another. So, yeah, as you can see, I've gone with a bit of a, a rocky look here. But then I do also put some of the mountain tufts in. Um, and that matches the colour of the vegetation more um, that's on the board where the Rust Viet Union starts, um, as opposed to being too green. Alright, so here I'm just uh, highlighting back up the lighter fur because even though I knew putting that sepia wash on earlier would darken all of the fur um, and just sort of flow into the recesses, I still want to have that contrast between the more orangey toned fur um, and, the, and the lighter tone. So I'm just going back to the um, mix that I had for the base coat. Um, and just picking out the raised sections of the fur, um, just so, yeah, it gives a bit of definition between the raised parts of the fur and those lower parts, um, but also builds that contrast again between the lighter fur on the underside and the more orangey fur on top. Because as always, try and keep in mind, this mini is going to be seen mostly from the middle of the table with everyone sitting around the edge, and so that contrast needs to come out from about a metre or so away. So here's the last couple of steps to finish off the base, just those tufts and then the red um, rim to make it really, really obvious which faction this uh, this mini's from. Um, and that means that Olga and Changa are finished. Um, so thank you very much for spending some time watching me paint another mini. Um, as always, I really hope you've gotten something out of it that you can use in your own painting, or at the very least, you've just simply enjoyed watching me paint. Um, please leave a comment down below, something that you liked about the video and something that you think can be improved. I've made um, a few changes along the way um, and I'd love to sort of know if there have been good changes, um, but there's always more that I can do, so I'd love to hit, get some feedback on that. Um, hit the like and subscribe um, to stay up to date with these videos as they keep coming out and please stop by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts that I've set up for this channel if you haven't yet. So with all that being said, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting everyone. Cheers.